Hello mga ka -ekop. I am Jose Roland Moya. The Employers Confederation of the Philippines, or ECOP, is here to ensure that your voice as employers is heard, articulated, and acted upon. ECOP addresses industrial relations issues, promotes social dialogue, and fosters proactive collaboration among employers and stakeholders. We are here to help employers become responsible, sustainable, and inclusive. ECOP has dual functions. First is its advocacy and lobbying role on labor and social policy issues on behalf of employers before the executive and legislative branches of the government. Second is the delivery of direct services, including training, capacity building, consultancy, provision of information, among others. By the way, wag po kayo nga alis. Manood po tayo sa buong programa. Sagutin ang aming Echo Plus question for the day. I-post ang tamang sagot sa Facebook account ng Echo at manalo ng premyo. I will later on be joined by my co-host in today's episode of our digital TV program, Ms. Lenartes Lights Veloria, National Project Coordinator for Rebuilding Better, Fostering Business Resilience, Post-COVID-19 International Labor Organization. Mga ka -Eco, welcome to Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice every other Monday at 5.30 p.m. Ang episode natin ngayon ay tungkol sa Gender, Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion, or JEDI. Ang focus ito ay para ipromote ang fair treatment and equal opportunity for all. It aims to eradicate discrimination on the basis of an individual or group of individuals' characteristics gaya ng age, gender, ethnicity, at iba pa. More of the information about JEDI will be discussed with our guests for tonight. Alamin ang iba pang impormasyon sa ating mga panauhin ngayong gabi. Ang unang makakasama natin ay si Ms. Diana Pardo Aguilar, Ms. Diana Pardo Aguilar is Vice President of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines and Chair of the ECOP Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. Ma'am Diana, magandang gabi po sa iyo. Welcome to ECO Plus Amplifying Your Voice. Why don't you greet the viewers of ECO Plus Amplifying Your Voice? Thank you, Roland, and good evening to all. Um, I'm happy that many businesses are now recognizing the importance of uh, diversity inclusion. As this is a personal advocacy of mine. Thank you, uh, Echo Plus, for having me today. Yeah, ma'am, our um, episode for tonight is about gender equality, diversity, and uh, inclusion. What is your concept of uh, diversity and uh, uh, inclusion? Well, diversity is really about uh, representation. Uh, in the context of the workplace, it means that uh, a company hires a wide range of individuals, regardless of sex, gender, race, age, uh, disability, etc. So recognizing diversity means that you are for equal employment opportunities. Inclusion, on the other hand, is about how well the contributions and perspectives of different groups of people are valued and integrated into the work environment. So if you take both together, uh, diversity and inclusion, inclusive workplace is one that makes everyone, regardless of who they are or what they do for the business, feel equally involved and supported in all areas of work. It's really about promoting belongingness in the company. So I would say d and uh, is really a culture at the workplace. Yeah, Ma'am Diana, within uh, ECOP, uh, there is a committee called uh, Gender and uh, Diversity. Please tell us about this committee in ECOP. Uh, this used to be known as Women uh, Committee in ECOP, but uh, I think right. two years ago, this was the name was changed to Gender and Equality Committee. That's correct, uh, Roland. ECOP started with a Women and Gender Committee okay. about a decade ago. Matagal nang pinopromote ng ECOP on gender equality and women empowerment in the workplace. So we uh, ensured that our programs promote the gender balance and that the women were included in the programs, but we realized that this was just not enough. Aside from women, there were other vulnerable groups in the workplace exposed to the risk of uh, discrimination and even harassment. So, andyan ng mga cultural 
minorities, mga persons with disabilities, all of them may be subject to discrimination at work. As you know, the buzzwords and battle cries globally now are diversity, equity, and inclusion. Many companies are already into this, so that's why we thought of revamping the uh, Women and Gender Committee, because we recognize that there is a larger fight. The Diversity and Inclusion Committee shall lead the efforts of ECOP in uh, creating and raising awareness on diversity and inclusion and implementing relevant programs among its constituents in the business community. We do this in partnership with Phil Wen. This is uh, Philippine Women's Economic Network and PBC We, Philippine Business Coalition for Women Empowerment. Mom, can you cite some of the challenges that uh, we encounter in the country in the promotion of uh, gender equality and uh, inclusion, specifically in the workplace? Um, well, Roland, there are many companies that have uh, established their own DNI policies and programs now. Like I said earlier, there's a larger fight. We now live in a digital world, and more and more people at the workplace face risks and threats of discrimination. It's vital that our workers feel safe in the workplace, feel that they belong and are valued. Ito yung importance ng DNI. It's an assurance that the company recognizes that there are different groups with different needs, and that the company makes an effort to include all of them in the consultation process and in the policy and program development. Kapag nagkaroon ng uh, sense of belongingness ang empleyado, they will become happy. And if they're happy, they will become productive. Uh, alam na natin kapag happy and productive ang mga empleyado, uh, positive ang impact nito sa kumpanya. Satisfied client, make for more revenues. So, Research really shows DNI makes good business sense. It's obviously really good for our businesses. I, I'd like you to elaborate uh, a little more on that. Why is it important for companies to have a policy and uh, a set of programs on uh, diversity and uh, uh, inclusion? Well, any company, whether big or small, can establish their own DNI program that suits the demand of demographics in the workplace. Para sa akin, whether uh, large, small, or medium, as I mentioned earlier, pwede magkaroon ng ganitong programs, no? Ecop and Philwen are here to help install these programs in your companies. Marami mga practices in larger companies ang pwede natin gawin. Good example. And to some extent, gayahin or kopihan. Uh, where are we now in terms of promoting uh, gender and equality in the society and in the uh, workplace? Do you think it remains an uphill uh, struggle? I believe uh, that we are poised, particularly after the pandemic, to move towards DNI. I think this this last couple of years have really made employers think long and hard about what is needed. A lot have pivoted to digital means and also have thought about the uh, mental health and uh, the work environment of uh, the employees. So. My, my feeling is that more and more people, both locally and abroad, will be looking towards having to uh, put in these programs, hopefully. And, you know, we, we, we want to remind the employers that not only will this uh, translate to happier employees, but also to better bottom line. Uh, what has changed uh, during the pandemic, especially in from the perspective of women and the promotion uh, specifically of gender and uh, equality? Well, um, what was evident over the last couple of the years of the pandemic is that it didn't hit, well, it hit various stratas in di at different ways. No? Women, I think, were particularly impacted by this pandemic in that, you know, they had to stay home and take care of their families. You know, some, some families had, you know, uh, double incomes, but uh, because of certain closures in some businesses, it was the women who actually bore the brunt of, I guess, the fallouts in employment and uh, also had to take on more uh, responsibilities at home with, with child rearing and uh, taking care of the home. So at least particularly for the women, I think it's been unusually hard. But as you know, um, women are particularly resilient and I think uh, many have rose to the occasion and are doing better. Now. So, but going back to the workplace, I think that we need to consider that women empowerment and uh, equal opportunities have to be foremost in the minds of employers, particularly going forward now in the media. Hindi po ba yung ating uh, kultura, mga traditions and practices are uh, promote in some sense uh, gender stereotyping 
And uh, ano yung mga efforts na ginagawa, lalo na ng mga champions on uh, gender uh, equality, diversity, and inclusion in the workplace? Kasama na po kayo dyan, uh, Ma'am Diana, para itong mga stereotyping ay mawala at upang lalo pa natin maisulong yung uh, equality sa workplace? Well, I think, Roland, um, it really has to be top-down. I, uh, I help out in a few boards, and at least I'm fortunate enough that they're quite balanced and uh, have representation for women and other and other groups. No, I think by having to show that women and you know other other groups which are not usually represented in let's say boards or top management, showing that they are equally capable and that they have a lot to bring to the table really helps open the minds of the, the the traditionalists in businesses and will help bring DNI and make it filter through to the lower levels. Now, I really think it has to start from the top and uh, by leading by good examples and uh, really showing that through time as it filters into down to the company, into the rank and file, that these new fresh ideas really will be bringing the company to bigger levels, to higher levels, making it more innovative and uh, agile, the new normal. ECOPAS collaborative undertakings and partnerships with other uh, organizations, including the International uh, Labor Organization. Would you like to expound a little more about the uh, partnership and the collaboration between the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines and uh, ILO in the promotion of gender inclusivity and diversity in the workplace, uh, Ma'am Diana? The ILO actually has been quite helpful in supporting our programs on uh, DEI. It has provided uh, many modules and resource guides on business continuity, planning, disability, and other areas which cover DEI. Also, I wanted to mention that we did sign a MOA or a mem memorandum of agreement with Phil Wen recently, where we outlined um, activities that we will do together. Basically, these are training programs, uh, consultancy and advisory services, which can help the companies capacitate and formulate their own DNI policies and programs. So there are many modules can be shared by ECO, Philwin, and ILO. And these include general communications, inclusive leadership, flexible work arrangement frameworks, which will really help uh, a lot of employers for, for the new world. Your final words, uh, Ma'am Diana? Thank you, Roland. Again, DNI is quite close to my heart. No? Most of us have been brought up trusting and wanting to be around people who look, think, dress and act like us. So it's natural that we are uncomfortable with dealing with people who seem different. This is because it's outside our comfort zone. But while many uh, are different from us, uh, the fact is that we each have talents and abilities that make us valuable members to society. Diversity brings about fresh perspectives and ideas. Therefore, um, DNI is now recognized as an absolute necessity to help keep our businesses agile, innovative, and relevant during this time of hyperchange. I believe trust and respect is the bedrock of inclusion. Having an open mind and valuing what each person can bring to the table is necessary in ensuring a successful and DNI culture in the workplace. Sana po, all employees will try to be proactive in adopting these policies and programs. Uh, thanks again for having me, Ron. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Diana Pardo Aguilar. Vice President of ECOP and Chair of the ECOP Committee on Diversity and uh, Inclusion. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Ma'am Diana. Good night and uh, stay safe. Good night to all. Thank you again. Thank you very much for a very fruitful discussion, Ms. Diana Pardo Aguilar. Now for our next guest, Ms. Aurora Boots Jotina Garcia, founding chairperson and president of Philippine Women's Economic Network, or PhilWen, and co-chairperson Philippine Business Coalition for Women Empowerment, or PBCW. Hello, Ms. Butch. Welcome to Echo Plus, amplifying your voice. Say hello to our Echo Plus, amplifying your voice viewers. Thank you, Roland. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, 
Kumusta kayo? At natutuwa ako na nandito kayo para makinig at makaalam ng pag-uusapan namin. Maraming salamat. Hello, Ms. Boots. So tell us, what is PhilWin? How did it start? How long ago did you uh, form the Philippine Women Economic Network? Okay. The truth is, actually, because of the work, my work in gender advocacy and diversity inclusion, I was actually a member of four organizations, okay? So in 2015, I thought about, you know, since I'm involved in four organizations, why don't we organize a coalition or rather a consortium putting together all women's business organizations who, after all, have the same advocacy, which is women's empowerment and economic empowerment and gender equality. So in 2015, I broached the idea to two other organizations of which I was not a member. The six organizations formed the founding members of Philwin. So we were, we signed a memorandum of agreement in 2016 and we were formally incorporated and organized in 2017. So siguro ang tanong is, sino-sino ba itong mga anim na organization yeah. Yeah. na ito? Siguro umpisa natin, the oldest, you might put it, uh, organization is Women's Business Council Philippines, yeah. where the members are women who own or lead small, medium, and large enterprises. Then we have an organization called Filipina CEO Circle, which is composed of women who do not own their businesses, but have become CEOs and broken the glass ceilings. Then we have an organization called Women Corporate Director, which is composed of women in boards. Then we have an organization called NEW, or Network of Enterprising Women, which are composed of women in startup businesses. Then the fifth one is uh, SPARC, which is Samahan ng Pilipina para sa reforma at kaunlaran, which uh, caters more to women in the marginalized sectors and women in provincial and rural areas. And there's a lot of engagement with the local government units. So I hope I covered everything. So all of these organizations, I thought was good to be united because they represent women participation in different aspects of this. So that's how Philwen came about. Wow, that sounds like the League of Extraordinary Women that you actually formed there. Uh, well, if you might put it as that. <laughs> <laughs> by creating that group. So um, are there data? Uh, yeah, yes, data, uh, the data studies, studies or, research? or research findings, uh, which uh, that establish the business case for gender equality, diversity, and uh, inclusion in the workplace. What do statistics tell us regarding the state of gender equality in the country? Well, the ironic thing is, as you all probably know, ang taas ng rating natin, iba sa yep. gender gap index. In fact, number although number seventeen worldwide, but second in the region, next to New Zealand, if I recall correctly. So definitely, we are ahead, actually, in fact, of many of our neighbors, especially in ASEAN and the Asian region. I think uh, businesses have recognized that if we practice or adopt gender equal policies, it benefits the businesses, you know, in many respects. One, it helps in recruitment, you know, being able to hire competent uh, employees regardless of gender being able to retain them, you know. And then also there have been uh, studies which indicate that having gender uh, equal policies or gender sensitivity in organizations helps in innovation because you're able to tap diverse opinions and views about challenges or issues that businesses are faced with. So notwithstanding this significant uh, ranking of the country, I think the reality is there are still many issues that we need to deal with. And for that reason, organizations like ourselves as well as other business applications have taken the initiative to really put some focus on addressing all of these issues which affect women in particular. It seems like you're posing a challenge to our organizations no? uh, the, on, on keeping that rank or even increasing no? our rank there. What do you think, Ms. Boots, what role can our uh, employer business management organizations like ECOP uh, play in terms of promoting gender diversity and inclusion among its constituents in the business community. Itong advocacy nito, maraming participants eh. I'd like to make reference to what we call a women empowerment and gender equality, diversity inclusion ecosystem. Okay? Madaming participants dyan. 
Of course, ang gobyerno nandyan. Importante because they provide the regulatory framework to push for this advocacy. Another important participant ay yung mga negosyo, yung mga nag empleyo ng tao. That's why it's important that business organizations such as ECHO purposely take action and advocate for gender equality because you are the, the ones who will define and the policies that your businesses will adopt to make sure that women for all genders have an opportunity to be employed gainfully in an environment which promotes such advocacy or a gender equality in the workplace. So maraming pwedeng gawin ang mga negosyante na or shall we say employers represented by ECHO. Well, why is it important for these uh, business uh, organizations to close rank and uh, promote the advocacy on JEDI? Well, katulad ng uh, Philwin, nagsama-sama na kami para lumakas yung influensya, di ba? The term that you use, para lumakas yung lobby. At ganun din ang mga iba't-ibang uh, negosyo, instead of them working separately and individually, it, it's always better to group together and organize and push the advocacy in a unified manner. There are many, aside from the ability to influence, the other benefit is you can learn from each other. Marami tayong matututunan eh. Kunyari, si Company A, merong ganitong polisiya. Aba, maganda yan ah. Subukan din nga yan natin, let's say, narinig ni Company B. So, merong opportunity to exchange best practices. Of course, at the same time, mag- mag-share din ng mga problema, challenges, para makapag-isip together ng solusyon na maaring nagre-require ng bagong batas or pagbabago sa batas. Mga ganun bagay. Yeah, Butch, what can you say about quote, unconscious gender bias, unquote? Is it still being experienced by uh, women even in top uh, management positions? The reality is yes. <laughs> you know, it, it's ingrained. It's a cultural challenge, I think. Ingrained in as part of society, and that's not only in the Philippines, but even in other parts of the world, even in developed countries. So uh, there's a, a whole uh, mindset change that needs to take place. And to my mind, it starts from the home. Nag-umpisa yan sa bahay. Di ba nakasanayan natin na usually napapakinggan natin? O oh, ikaw, Maria, huwag ka na mag-college, mag-ano ka na lang, tama ng high school, o mag, kasi mag-aasawa ka naman. Huwag ka mag-aaral, o kung magka-college ka man, huwag ka mag-aaral ng ano nga, ng, ng engineering, o lol, no? para sa lalaki lang yan. O oh, ikaw naman lalaki, ikaw mag-aaral ka ng kolehyo, aralin mo, engineering ha, doktor, o ano mang, kurso. So sa pamilya pala, nag-uumpisa na yung ano, ng may kaibahan ang lalaki at babae, pati sa mga pag-aaral ng kurso, pati sa behavior. So nag-uumpisa yan dyan. Pagpunta naman sa eskwela, ganun din. So maraming bagay na kailangang <laughs> palitan natin para itong unconscious bias na ito ay matanggal mula pa sa pagkabata ng mga mamamayan natin. Pero di ba butch and lights kapag uh, pinag-uusapan na yung norms, yung mga yung culture, parang napakahirap banggain ito at saka baguhin. But uh, over the years we have seen no the the change, the evolution of uh, mindsets. Paano kaya natin mas mapapabilis itong pagbabago ng mga mindsets at pananaw boots when it comes to uh, gender equality, diversity, and uh, inclusion. Alam mo, natutuwa nga ako meron kayong ganitong programa eh. This is one avenue. We need to educate and make our people aware. No, awareness is important. Importante alam nila ano bang ano ba, bakit nga ba pinag-uusapan ito? Ano ba yung hmm. ibig sabihin nito? Nakakabuti ba to na hindi natin binibigyan ng oportunidad ang babae? O nakaka, na, namimiss ba natin yung mga talento at kakayahan ng mga babae dahil ayaw natin silang isama sa ano? So, ang awareness is important. Education is important. Kaya ako nga naniniwala ko na malaking role ng pamilya kasi doon nag-umpisa ang education ng kahit na sino sa atin, di ba? Pagdating naman sa eskwela, na, doon naman mare reinforce yun. At pagdating naman sa society, sa general society, pag nag-aral, tuloy-tuloy pa rin dapat yung you know, pagtuturo, pagpapaalam sa mga tao na hindi tama yung ganung pag-iisip. 
na malaking bagay na wawala sa atin kung hindi natin binibigyan ng pansin ang mga kababaihan. Tama yun si Ms. Moodstone, no? like changing social norms will really start from the core of uh, the communities, which is the families, uh, and then goes up to the schools, and then goes up to our communities, right? And na-imagine ko na mga mukhang papunta dyan ang mga plano nyo, Ms. Boots, no? so, sa PBC We. But uh, siguro for now, no, we, we want to look at like, how do you think we can increase no, yung participation ng women in key leadership positions. I think this is uh, one of the things that uh, we actually look about in, in the ILO Women in yeah. STEM program and Rebuilding Better Project. How can we encourage them given the challenges that they're having, right? You know, as, as uh, family members, unpaid care work and all that and the social norms that are discouraging them. Um, how do you think we can encourage them to like get into these leadership uh, positions, not only to ensure workplace gender equality, but also to recognize those milestones that they have. Uh, if you recall, di ba, sinabi ko sa umpisa na, isa doon sa organization nga namin yung ano, dalawa, in fact, Filipino CEO Circle, mga CEO, tapos yung Women Corporate Directors, Women in Boards. To my mind, para dumami ang babae sa leadership positions, unang-una, dapat mas maraming babaeng maging CEO, maging board directors. Because uh, studies have shown that where there are women in boards or where are women, there are more women in leadership positions, more likely the organization will be gender sensitive. There will be more workplace gender equality in these types of organizations. Pero bago naman sila makarating dun sa position na yun, kailangan nating i-train din sila. Alam mo, gumawa kami ng study a few years pa. Pinag-aralan namin, Bakit nawawala ang mga maraming babae na gumpisa as, uh, let's say, um, junior staff, okay? Mm-hmm. They graduate to become middle managers. Pagkatapos, no, nawawala na sila. No, they fall off the, what we call nga, the study was called the leaking pipeline. So, sa mga pag-aaral na yun, ginawa namin, two things, uh, oh, several things emerge. One is uh, because the organizations that they're involved with do not give them opportunity. So obviously, kailangan magbago yung pag-iisip ng organisasyon na yun para you know, mag-promote ng mas maraming bae. Pangalawa, yung work setting is not conducive naman. Kasi nga, meron silang multiple roles. So importante din na yung polisiya ng mga organisasyon na yun ay recognizes that women have multiple roles. That's why nag-flourish nga yung flexible work arrangements. Eh. Dahil, you know, there are some women who are good, talented, but have to keep up with certain familiar responsibilities. So, sana yung mga kumpanya nila, pumapayag na hindi sila pumapasok araw-araw or pumapasok sila so many hours a day. You know, all sorts of the combinations of flexible work arrangement. Pero ang isang bagay din na napagkaalam na namin, eh, yung baba, mga babae mismo, walang konfiyansa o takot, takot na maging whatever, you know, maging VP, maging CEO or something. At sa nanggagaling yun, sa lack of, you know, lack of confidence per house, kaya nga palaging sinasabi ko sa mga kababaihan na, ang tanong ay, pag in ka ng position na promotion, ang tanong ay hindi dapat, bakit ako? Ang tanong dapat ng mga babae, para tumaas sila sa organisasyon, bakit hindi ako? In other words, bakit hindi ako ang binigyan ng oportunidad? So, kailangan ma-develop din ng mga babae. So, dalawang the organizations where they are should recognize this. But at the same time, we have to develop the women to become CEOs or, you know, senior leaders in any of these organizations. Yeah, thank you, Butch, for your comprehensive answer to the question. Anong role ang pwedeng gampana ng mga kalalakihan, uh, both at home and, and, and in the workplace, uh, upang maitaguyod ang gender equality and uh, empowerment? Malaking papel. <laughs> Remember, you are 50% of the population, whether locally or globally. So, ang filosofiya namin, kasama dapat ang lalaki. Okay, bakit? Alam, let's be let's be honest. Ang decision makers ng mas kisang, you know, whether in politics in, or in businesses, whether here or locally, are still mainly men, dominated by men. 
So we are not here to antagonize, but we are here to partner with men because it's important that they are part of the decision-making process. Related to that nga, nagtayo kami actually ng ano, local chapter na inumpisan sa Australia of what they call the Male Champions of Change mm-hmm. Philippines. So the members of this organization are male CEOs who deliberately commit to adopt gender sensitive policies in their businesses. So diyan namin ipinapakita na malaking bagay or malaking role meron ang mga kalalakihan. At paalala din natin sa bahay, well, in in typical households, may tatay or may father figure, you know. So kailangan partner sabay-sabay tayong nagtatrabaho para sa advocacy na ito. So importante ang kalalakihan. No doubt. Oh, thank you, Miss Boots, for your very inspiring and very encouraging and at the same time challenging message mm-hmm. to both our women and men out there on how we can support women in the workplace. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but Miss Boots, final word for our viewers for today's uh, uh, session. Well, gusto ko lang sabihin na ano, kung hindi natin bibigyan ng pansin ang gender equality, women empowerment, and diversity and inclusion, laking nawawala sa atin. Maging sa organisasyon, maging sa ekonomiya natin, dahil malaking kontribusyon ng mga kababaitan. Tandaan natin na sa mga MSMEs, siguro 80-90% niyan ay kababaitan. So hindi dapat natin niyang pabayaan. Bigyan natin ng pantin dahil malaking bagay ang mawawala sa atin na pag hindi natin tinuunan ang women's empowerment, gender equality, at diversity and inclusion. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Butch, for your ideas, for your insights. And uh, we look forward to stronger uh, partnership between your organization, uh, PBC We and uh, Philwen, uh, with ECOP not only this year, but in the coming years. Before we proceed to our last guest for tonight, mga ka we will be right back after this segment. In today's fast-paced, dynamic, and complex work settings, Sound industrial relations enables the enterprise and its employees to work together in the most productive and harmonious manner. It provides enterprises with the necessary responses through institutionalized mechanisms and tools to adapt quickly as situations, especially those that could lead to conflicts unfold. Labor compliance is also important in maintaining good relations between employers and employees. ECOP's training services are responsive to the needs of employers to put in place sound industrial relations and comply with labor standards. ECOP's industrial relations programs helps companies prepare for doors labor inspection, install social dialogue mechanisms, engage in collective bargaining negotiations with trade unions, and design proactive employee discipline and termination process. Our industrial relations program is open to members and non-members of ECOP. However, members of ECOP are allotted free slots and when they have to pay registration fees, these are based on discounted rates. The IR program can also be conducted in-house, in-house to suit the requirements of a specific company. Some of ECOP's IR programs are synchronous or self-paced and could be accessed via the ECOP eCampus. ECOP Training and Development Department also offers technical assistance in installing industrial relations interventions through our help desk. To learn more, about our industrial relations program, visit www.ecop.org.ph or email us at ecoptnd at gmail.com. And we're back. Welcome again to Echo Plus, amplifying your voice. I am Jose Roland Moya, 
And let me introduce our last guest, Ms. Julia Abad, Executive Director of the Philippine Business Coalition for Women Empowerment, or PBC We. Hello, Julia. Welcome to Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice. Say hello to our Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice viewers. Hello to everyone and hello, Roland. So what is the Philippine Business Coalition of Women Empowerment? Why and how was it formed? And what does it offer to other Philippine companies? So PBC We, or the Philippines Business Coalition for Women Empowerment, was formed in 2017 was really created to bring together like-minded companies to encourage the entry, retention, and advancement of women in the workplace. We help companies to benchmark their performance against their peers, to set up a standard for themselves, and to roadmap, uh, to create roadmaps towards improving workplace gender equality in their own settings. What inspired this idea? Like, who are the first women who came together to put this all together? So actually, the first group of companies had a very good mix of male and female CEOs. We started with seven founding members in 2017. They were Converges, um, which is now Concentrix, Ayala Land, Accenture, the SSI Group, SGV, the Magsaysay Group, and Natasha, which is a direct selling outfit. And Julia, how many member companies do you have right now? And how do you plan or intend to grow uh, your members? So we now have 17 members to date. We do it through events. We talk to business organizations such as yours. What, what, one of our main strategies I, I feel is really getting companies and their leaders to talk about their experiences with PBC We, you know, whether it helped them to sort of benchmark and improve performance or actually be able to engage with a network of peers and have sort of learning uh, discussions with them uh, and also to share sort of some best practices across the network which also of course helps others to learn from them as well which is a big deal for a lot of our members yeah julia in the current uh, business climate and uh, in the context of your uh, vast experience how do companies uh, react to the promotion of gender diversity in the workplace? Do you think Philippine companies are consciously pursuing the goal of uh, gender equal uh, workplaces? What difference have you noticed uh, well from the past and uh, up to the present? I have to be honest and say we do encounter still um, sort of executives and managers who will still tell us that, you know, there are other sorts of priorities that they need to be dealing with at the moment um, outside of diversity, outside of gender equality. But increasingly, companies are also looking at diversity as a business strategy. It's important to their employees uh, to feel that their views are taken into consideration. It's increasingly important to employees to be part of a group that sort of embraces differences and different opinions and uses that, you know, as a means to improve creativity within organizations and, and in fact to spur innovation, which as we all know has been an important factor to the survival of businesses in the last couple of years. So while um, there are still challenges, I should think that you know, the appeal of creating more inclusive, uh, more diverse, more creative, more innovative organizations has grown in the past few years. Do you think you can tell us about the multiple roles that women play now? And I think, I think this is becoming more defined in your work at PBCUE, right? It has evolved uh, already. So, I mean, the multiple roles that women play, I think, have been emphasized more, more than ever in the last couple of years where home and work have had no boundaries. So now more than ever, um, women are seen to be juggling responsibilities with regard to care for dependents, whether they are seniors or, or children, as well as other domestic responsibilities and in addition to their responsibilities in the office. So while we have also seen that the whole family spending time at home 
has normalized a greater sharing of the domestic responsibilities across different members of the family. We still see women uh, carrying sort of the bigger share of the workload and that's really something that that we're working to help mitigate or you know normalize we try to normalize the sharing of roles but we also try and help workplaces think of more flexible terms for women so that they are able to curate their hours a bit better you know because in these busy days every hour um is spent doing something relevant so so time is very important especially for for working mothers and that's something we really try and help them curate their hours and and make their day um, sort of as productive as they'd like um so what support do women need from organizations like PBCW so that they may be able to balance and succeed in their multiple roles as you said like uh, yes curate their hours like Um, what kind of support can uh, women um, see or uh, find at organizations like PBTV? So what we've helped organizations with a lot during these times is to develop different permutations of flexible work arrangements. That's one thing. In fact, we concluded a sort of working session with our clients very recently on different features of hybrid work because, you know, as the lockdown sort of ease um, and offices are looking more to going back to face-to-face work. But also as workplaces also look at online work or some form of online work or work from home as a long-term rather than a pandemic-induced setup. So we've tried to to help them look at, you know, what the workplace of the future or what the workplace of the near future will look like if you try and combine these two things, you know, how have people done it uh, regionally uh, in Australia and how have, have our their peers, how have companies here um, envisioned it and how do they see themselves rolling them out in the future. So we've tried to bring companies together to sort of talk about what is possible, what they have done and what they're planning, just so companies get a sense of, you know, what's out there when they also look at how they will sort of structure their workplaces as we look at a post-COVID or a new normal uh, scenario. Uh, PBCWE member companies are uh, all large and uh, influential in their uh, respective uh, industries. How do we promote uh, gender equality, diversity, and inclusion, or JEDI? Is it Jedi or Jedi? <laughs> For easy mem- memory, it's Jedi. Yeah, it's Jedi. Jedi. How do we yeah, promote Jedi. Uh, Jedi among micro, small, and medium enterprises? And why is this concept important to a micro, small, and medium enterprises as well? Well, I think for the very same reasons that they are important for large uh, companies because diversity and inclusion, inclusive and diverse settings, um, do spur innovation. They they do help with retention and they do increase employee morale. And those are things that, that work, you know, whether you have a thousand employees or just five. They are things that are important to your business, to your productivity, and to your sort of long term strategy. Uh, So I think that for the very same reasons that we do promote inclusivity and diversity in large companies, they will work for small and medium enterprises as well. What are some of your collaborative programs or projects with uh, companies and uh, business organizations like ECOP? So we've had a lot of good work with ECOP. We have run a an employee survey that looked at the baseline um, and the interests on diversity for ECOP. That's really something we hope to do with other organizations as well, so that the organization, well, the network gets a feel of you know, how their organization looks at diversity, what are the things that they are currently doing, um, what are the things they would like to be involved in, how would an organization like PBCV be able to support them in their gender and diversity and their inclusion work. 
Um, so that's one thing. We also do events. We've, we've done uh, events with ECOP. I think we just concluded a successful one on, on disability and diversity. And this has helped sort of um, increase awareness of PBCW. We do try to get more than just the executive team of PBCW to come and speak at events. So when we do get invitations, we try and get some of our other member CEOs or, or HR senior leaders to come and speak because it's really important for us to be able to share also what our members are doing to a broader business community because we feel that there's really nothing more convincing to peers than to hear from the experiences of somebody who's, you know, who, who is in your shoes, so to speak. And we really look at our collaborations with larger business organizations because of, you know, their cohesiveness and, and their network as a major pillar in our strategy to increase awareness and build the membership of PBC. Wow, that's a lot of exciting things you know, that's happening with PPCW and also ECO. And uh, it's amazing how the discussions have evolved, you know, by just focusing on uh, women empowerment and now different emerging uh, issues on diversity and inclusion. How else we, can we jointly promote women empowerment and diversity and inclusion in the workplace? Like, uh, how else can we, can we expand further um, the amazing work that you are doing? Well, of course, we'd love it if you could help us uh, increase our membership. One of the things also that we try and promote is really get companies to be serious about measuring their their performance uh, um, with regard to uh, workplace gender equality, diversity, and inclusion. So you had mentioned the business case earlier. And so building the business case and, and talking about it is one main pillar of PBC We's work. Another is really b getting more companies to contribute to strengthening that business case. And, and we help them do that by going through a an assessment process, you know, where companies get establish a baseline on how they're doing now. They establish a roadmap and they track their performance against that roadmap. Um, and they and they sort of triangulate this data with with how their employees perceive how they're doing and how their policies are looking. That is something that that a lot of our members uh, are doing right now is going through that assessment process. And if more companies really committed themselves to it, that would create more data, of course, that would build that business case. And also that would have more companies really sort of scientifically looking at, you know, how they're doing today and really tracking it so that they can see sort of concrete progress along their work. So that's another way I think that, that you could be helpful is to advocate for, for companies to go through um, an assessment process um, and really track um, their progress on diversity and inclusion. Yeah, uh, PBC We has uh, gone a long way in the promotion of gender, equality, diversity, and inclusion in the workplace, but uh, much remains to be done. W what's next for PBC We in uh, 2022 and, um, and beyond? Well, hopefully more members. <laughs> We're also um, doing a lot of work with the Securities and Exchange Commission trying to help them with their sustainability reporting template because another thing that we do advocate for companies to do is publicize their gender um, related data and you know how to use this data to really make improvements in terms of um, company policy so we're looking at expanding that work and helping companies you know look at their gender data a bit more closely and and see how how they can sort of use that data to improve their work so policy reform work um, more memberships i think we'll do a lot of work a lot of work on the hybrid workplace and what yeah. companies have have come up with uh, in the coming months that's i think what we'll see in 2022 and of course we'll really look at um, expanding our membership and really giving companies a platform to talk about the work that they're doing and to share it with a bigger sort of business community yeah your parting words please uh, julia so we always see that you know gender equality it is usually looked at as a sort of right thing to do. 
um, and it is. But it is also really look, diversity and inclusion is is more than the right thing to do. It is really the smart thing to do. So I think it's important for companies to start looking at diversity as a way to revive business as a long-term business strategy, not just for recovery, but I think for sustainable growth. So with that, uh, thank you for having us um, and for giving us time to talk about TBCV and what we are doing with and for the business community in the Philippines. Thank you very much, Julia. We're always a fan of your work. You, PBC, we has really gone a lot of milestones in establishing, you know, the agenda for gender uh, equality, diversity, and inclusion. And it's gonna go even a longer way beyond 2022, and uh, lots of long strategy plans uh, with ECOP as well. So thank you, and uh, see you again for our next forum. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Julia, and uh, good luck to BBC We Keep safe. Thank you, Roland. Thank you, Lights, and thank you, Echo. Let's have a short break for the Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice Netizens Question and Answer. Interested in getting familiar with the single and official voice of Philippine employers? Want to stay updated on the latest news and trends on labor and social policy issues? By becoming a member of ECOP, you can have access to all of these and many more. Explore the benefits of joining ECOP. ECOP provides its members with a comprehensive range of services that includes training, advocacy, and information through seminars, research publications and networking. The ECOP Help Desk provides assistance to members who may have questions or concerns on issues regarding human resource management, HRM, industrial relations, IR, and occupational safety and health, OSH. Managed and operated internally using ECOP facilities and technical staff, the Help Desk can be easily accessed through multiple platforms. We regularly conduct free webinars to keep our constituents in the business community abreast with the latest and upcoming developments on industrial relations, social policies, and related topics. Aside from free webinars, we offer to members big discounts in our public training programs, seminars, and workshops on IR, HR, OSH, and a lot more. Philippine employers are represented by ECOP in various tripartite bodies. ECOP's participation in congressional hearings and other policy consultations ensures that the voice of employers is articulated, heard and acted upon. As a member, you can network and join events that bring together company representatives to discuss developments and issues on industrial relations and human resources management through our members' general meeting, MGM. Aside from this, you can attend, discover ECOP, an interactive forum organized for members and non-members alike to familiarize them with ECOP's advocacies, activities, and programs. An overview of pending labor bills in Congress and proposed policy issuances discussed in the Technical Executive Committee of the Department of Labor and Employment are usually presented. We provide a learning and sharing platform among representatives of our member companies through our ECOP networks. ECOP Networks has three fields of specialization which are, Industrial Relations and Human Resources, IRHR, Occupational Safety and Health, OSH, and Corporate Social Responsibility and Responsible Business Conduct, CSR, RBC. As a member company, your management or HR representatives will have the opportunity to receive full overseas technical scholarship on topics such as industrial relations, human resource management, and occupational safety and health organized in Japan. ECOP also organizes the annual National Conference of Employers, where our members enjoy discounts when participating. Lastly, you will enjoy other benefits such as up-to-date, informative e-bulletin and research publications, we provide our members up-to-date and relevant news, studies and statistics gathered from reputable agencies as well as trends and practices directly collected from various industries. Our members can enjoy 50% discount on research publications such as Corporate Compensation Survey and CBA Report. 
free conferences, workshops, or seminars by invitation through ECOP Special Projects. Exclusive access to members only page in the ECOP website where you can review different project tools, documents, copies of position papers, minutes of committee meeting, and loads of other records. ECOP Plus, amplifying your voice is ECOP's digital television program that airs regularly in various social media platforms. The program discusses ECOP's advocacies and programs. It also features interviews with employers, practitioners and policymakers on current, evolving and future workplace issues. Airs twice a month, 5.30 p.m., on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. As our members continue to grow their businesses, ECOP will always continue its mandate of protecting the interest and advocating the welfare of the business community. Discover the many ways you can support your business or enterprise today. Join the Employers Confederation of the Philippines. Your partner. Your advocate. The single and official voice of the Philippine employers on labor and social policy issues. We are now in the Echo Plus Netizens Corner segment of the show. Uh, let's take a question from our netizens from Echo social media account. This one is a question posted by Gina of Cebu City in ECOP's uh, Facebook page. The question of uh, Gina reads as follows. Hello, ako po ay isang bagong empleyado sa aming kumpanya. Bilang babae, ano ang maipapayo nyo sa akin na paghahanda para sa aking career advancement sa kumpanya? Lights, you may want to answer the question of Gina. Thank you, Roland. At thank you, Gina, sa iyong napakagandang tanong. No? At congratulations sa iyong bagong trabaho sa iyong kumpanya. Napakamagandang milestone lagi ang pagkakaroon ng isang bagong trabaho. At uh, dahil bago tayo sa trabahong ito, kailangan paghandaan natin. No? Hindi lang dahil meron kang bagong trabaho, eh, mag-relax na tayo. No? Kailangan nating paghandaan ang ating uh, career advancement. No? So, importante na i-map out natin kung ano yung mga skills na kakailanganin natin para sa trabaho. Ano yung technical skills at yung soft skills na tinatawag. No? Meron kaming halimbawang training sa ECOP, no? ang In-Business Soft Skills Training, kung saan ay binibigyan natin ng kasanayan ang ating mga empleyado, babae man o lalaki, ng kakailanganin para mas masanay sa workplace, no? para ikaw ay mas madaling mag-advance. So, kasama dyan ay ang teamwork, for instance. No? Paano tayo makikipagsalamua sa ating mga team members? Or ang reaching consensus, no? paano tayo makikipag-negotiate sa ating mga office mates o kaya sa mga boss natin. No? Itong iba't ibang skills na to ay kailangan, meron tayo, parang baon ba, no? sa ating paglago sa ating kumpanya para hindi lang tayo pumapasok araw-araw, nagiging mas kapakinipakinabang at produktibo tayong mga empleyado. At mas masaya pa kayo no? na nagtatrabaho sa iyong kumpanya before you know it, no? uh, na-promote ka na o ilang taon ka na rin sa kumpanya. So, Importante na i-map out natin ang mga skills na kakailanganin natin sa um, ating mga kumpanya at saan natin pwedeng kunin yun. No? So, halimbawa, magandang tignan natin online. Meron din tayong makikita gaya sa ECO, for instance. No? Marami silang training na ma offer para sa'yo. So, tignan mo, kumbaga sa pag-upgrade ng phone, 
ano yung mga skills na pwedeng uh, magpataas ng iyong kalidad bilang isang empleyado. So, I hope nakatulong sa iyo yan, Gina, at uh, I, I, I congratulate you again and I look forward sa iyong pagbalik sa ECOP din uh, para sa mga kasanayan na ito. Thank you, Lights, for answering the question of uh, uh, Gina. To our netizens, uh, keep posting your question in the Facebook page of ECOP and our and uh, our other uh, uh, social media accounts. Uh, for our netizens, kanina binanggit namin ang the Echo Plus question for the day na dapat abangan para manalo ng premyo. Ito po ang Echo Plus question for the day. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng acronym na JEDI? So ito na ang mechanics. No? I-comment ang sagot sa Facebook account ng Echo. Hashtag Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice. Space, your answer, space, anong title episode na ito. At... At ito ang pinaka-importante, don't forget to like and share ang episode na ito sa ECOP Facebook page. Ang mapipiling mananalo ay inonotify sa ECOP Facebook page natin at bibigyan namin ng instructions paano makuha ang premium ito. Thank you so much, Mrs. Diana Pardo Aguilar, Ms. Aurora Boots, uh, Jotina uh, Garcia, Miss Julia Abad for uh, your time. Um, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, sa, mga, sa mga nanunood ngayon, maraming salamat. Thank you also to Gina for uh, posting your question in ECOP's uh, Facebook page. Huwag niyong kalimutan na uh, sagutin yung question for the day para manalo ng premyo. Mga ka -ECOP, I'm your host, Jose Roland Moya, with my co-host, Linardes M. Veloria. See you every other Monday at 5.30 p.m. sa next episode ng Echo, Echo Plus, Plus Amplifying, Amplifying Your, your voice. voice. Keep safe and God bless everyone.